Hi, we're One Direction, and you're watching Elvis Duran and The Morning Show. The Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge. It's One Direction, guys. Yeah. When they were arriving at the studios, uh, we had a few people downstairs waiting. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. We, we can't believe the you know like the the crowd that showed up at today's show was was the amazing thing for us. You couldn't believe that that many people turned up for us. It's incredible. We've had such a good time here in America because the fans have been so amazing. <laughs> so far in the states, you guys having a good time? Are you enjoying America? Yeah, I love it here. I love the food. Love the people. Everything's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, so, so how long will you be in the States before, or around the world before you actually get to go back to the UK and go home? Uh, we've, got county, we've got like four, four we've got like five weeks, I think. 40-something yeah. days left, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> do you miss home at all? Do you miss your bed? Yeah, I miss, miss home a bit, yeah. We don't, we don't, um, this is the longest we've been away from home. We still have to tour Australia, so. Wow. I think <laughs> it's, it's just like the like home-cooked food and obviously... Your, your, your own bed is a big one, though, you're right with that. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. you know, your bed has that smell. <laughs> yeah, that, is it your pillow has the you smell? It's your yeah. smell. It's like yeah. you know, it's not it, stinky. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Some people's mad. Me. That has not been washed. No, no, no. I'm not talking. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying it's a bad smell. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case people are still learning your story, someone tell me how it came together and how One Direction got to where One Direction is today. Yeah, so we all uh, we all entered X Factor as solo artists, and we made it through to the final 200, which is the boot camp stage. And then the judges thought it'd be better that they put us in a band, and then here we are today. Now, do you Sorry, guys all dog. get along? Do you fight over the girls? Like, do you have the same taste in women? We don't really. We have like some of us have similar tastes, but we don't really fight. Well, Harry, I mean, what, who like, are you into? What kind of girl are you into? Um, I don't know. I like like a girl who's got a good sense of humor. Right. You know, fun. But, uh, but yeah. She can be like a dog face, but as long as she's funny. <laughs> yeah. How about fans? Would you date any of your fans? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a, it's really a thing whether they're a fan or not. Whether you date them, it's whether they're you know nice, nice looking, good person. Oh, really? What's so interesting about One Direction, and from our point of view, being in this business, and we've interviewed everyone, is you know, it's you have gone from zero to sixty in a very short amount of time. I think everything's still you know pretty surreal for us, and we're just kind of enjoying the ride. Right. It's like, you know, obviously we weren't expecting to any of this before. You know, we, we were just on the X Factor a year and a half ago. So, like, we just expected to maybe do a record in, in, in the UK and see how it goes, that kind of thing. You know, as you said, the power of Twitter and YouTube and stuff has spread the word of, of us, you know, across the world. And now we're sitting in, you know, one of the biggest stations in, in America, you know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's crazy. Duran. If someone, if you had to answer the question, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm hoping you will. What is it that makes One Direction so, so successful? What is it? Just be honest and tell us. In, in terms of like what we kind of, like are, we don't really know. I think, I think what people like is just that we don't really have to try to get on. We just get on quite naturally, and you know we're. We're like the kind of boys that you go to school with. Like we're the boys who pick up the bras who, that get thrown on stage. Like we're a little bit. We're not really completely clean. And then put them yeah. on. Those everyday guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're the normal guys. We put them on. We. No, we don't really put them on. <laughs> right. <laughs> sometimes. I, I just think you know because we're 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 not trying to be anything that we're not really. You know, we're just trying to be ourselves, have a good time. And I think that's what people enjoy. Just you know, us having a good time with them, sort of thing. I think people often uh, when they when they get into fame, they kind of try and be. The, the people that they think other people want them to be, if that makes sense. And we're just being exactly as we were before fame, you know. I think that I think we're quite lucky with like how our fans are because our fans have made it so that you know we we, we feel completely comfortable just being ourselves, whatever we're doing. You know, we're not we don't have to try and be anything that we're not type thing. Can your nose hit the bottom of the cake? Are we good to go? Everyone ready? Three, two, one. Oh, that must have hurt. That must have hurt. <laughs> Last year we were here, uh, I don't know if you remember it, we crammed your head down into a Union Jack cake. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did it take a while to get like the food coloring off your face? Well, the thing was, it was an ice cream cake, yeah, and it was solid. <laughs> it actually really hurt my nose. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, yeah. How do you tell that yeah. story? Why do you have a black eye? Well, yeah. I was slammed into an ice cream you cake. You guys should. Uh, <laughs> you go into the studio, and it's just you and the microphone, and you sing. Yes. You sing your heart out. Then you go listen to yourself, 
and you hear your voice, mm. what's the feeling you get now when you hear just you? Um, I feel like, you know how most people, if you record them on the phone, they don't like the sound of their voice coming back. I feel like I'm, like, I do like the sound of my voice, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I've, as I'm listening to stuff, I'm all, I, I can just hear everything. I'm thinking, okay, I want to do that again. I want to do that again. So that in particular, yeah, I am a bit of a perfectionist there. When I first went solo, I made the exact album that I wanted to make. Good morning, by the way. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, exact album that I wanted to make. And then obviously with the success of Slow Hands, in its period where you know, hip hop and R&B was kind of dominating the radio. I probably shouldn't have really done that well, but I think it stood out because it was, I guess, different. And uh, that's why, and then I walk into the studio making this album with a bit more confidence. Every day you walk in to try and push the boundaries out a little bit. And I thrive off looking at what's on the radio and, you know, on all the different charts and then try and try and do something different, as you say. It's really interesting because I've I've not brought up the boys one time, but you brought them up four times in this in this interview. Yeah, it's a massive part of my life. It's not anything I can try and escape. And, well, and no, and nor you know, should you. That's yeah, you, you guys made some great music together. But what I love is the fact that you're doing this at your own pace. Yeah. Because as an artist, you have to, you have to trust your own gut, and, yeah. and there's no, there's no race here against the well, boys the or, or I, I, Rihanna I spent, or anyone. Well, this is the thing. I spent years of of, uh, of my life being you know doing this magical thing and this wonderful band and whatever else. But there was such a pace of life that I had to stick to because you couldn't call any shots in that sense and whatever else. And it was like, we were on tour sometimes. They're like, oh yeah, we just sold out another tour for next year, so you're going to have to write that album. And I'm like, I've just finished that one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's and literally we, what was happening. I we used to, used to do that. We used to give away tickets. Remember? We were, Well, yeah, you're going to go see 1D next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we used to get off stage at like, and it would be, I don't know, whatever time. We, we have another show the next day. We had a truck, right? We rented this MI6 sound van that they used for like tapping like into people's things where but uh legit we rented it from mi6 <laughs> this is so funny and you put it on a little truck and bring it around it had a sound thing in there we had like a late night studio so i'd come off stage and then when you can't sleep you go in the studio they pull you in you do your thing in the studio then you go off to bed then you wake up at four the next day do the show same thing again and we were like recording on the road as time wow. went by and i was like i don't want to do that with myself out of all this making a movie mm. going on tour with a great band writing your own stuff Recording an album, what's what's the big payoff for Harry Styles? Like, what is it that really charges um, you up? I mean, I love. I've always loved performing. I love touring. Um, I think this time, because I made a record in just a different way, I kind of got to immerse myself in it much more than I had before. I really, really fell in love with the studio side. So I love being in the studio now, and kind of writing and working stuff out with with everyone. So I. I love that. I've always loved performing. I still very much do. Um, but I'd say in the last kind of year and a half, I've very much just found a new love for kind of the studio part of it. Excellent. So yeah. you got a tour ahead. But yep. after that, do you, do you start leapfrogging ahead and trying to figure out what's after that? I don't know, man. It's a long way away. Yeah. So uh, I was listening to the lyrics of "We Made It." Mm. Ta- walk me through some of those lyrics about. There, I use. I heard the word "tasting" a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, the song in general, we started off as the with the title and the concept, and I did this song with Julian Benetta and John Ryan, who did a lot of the One Direction stuff. And it originally started as a bit of a message between me and the fans that the feeling I'm going to get at that first tour show at Barcelona, because they've been so patient, and we, I feel like. That's going to be a collective feeling, you know, that we've made it together made and it. this is my first show. And, and, and I kind of wanted to put that across to them. When people stream slow, they, they've streamed slow hand, you know, four billion times. What is that? Why is that? Why do they do that? Say mm. it. I want to hear you say it. This is a good song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and it because they I, thought it was great. Yeah, they think it's great. I think they think it was great because it was so different. Well, no, but my, I guess my point here is, can, is it easy for you to accept the fact that you're really great at what you do? I suppose I'm all right. I'm in the, I'm in the top few percent. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's hard to do that. It is hard. Like it's, I've been doing it for, for 10 years and you don't, I imagine that like nearly 10 years I've become doing this and you, you never like, if you got used to it, there's something wrong with you because it's not yeah. like, it's not a normal thing to do. And you always want to get better. Yeah. And, and I get that. Yeah. And you're always trying to outdo yourself and you never like. Yeah, you never think that. I just don't see it as me. 
And you know, that's fine. It's great, which is a good thing. Do, are you enjoying our city? You having a yeah, good time? Yeah, I've had a great time here. You know, I, when I used to come here, when I was within the band, it was a lot more difficult to get about. There was one time where me and Niall were going to Applebee's. The oh, great yeah. stable yeah. food place yeah. that is. <laughs> and uh, when I was younger, that was like, all I knew was, oh, Applebee's up the road, I'll go for walks. So we came out the hotel and it was like 400, 500 people and they just followed us. Now, I was actually speaking to one of the paparazzi the day. He was reminding me at the time. He was like, I backed off because I was like, I couldn't handle it. Even he couldn't handle it at that point. I was like, some girl had hold of my ear and this was happening. Someone's pulling hair and uh, me and Niles Ni- Ni- just in the corner like, I can't do this. Like, <laughs> it, me and him were just like, we just wanted to go get some mozzarella sticks and chill out. It was like, but now, now I'm in the city. It's nice. Uh, you know, I understand that how things work work a lot more and, uh, and you know since I took time out for myself I appreciate things a lot more but it's got a lot easier and I love this city it's great good you're taking life at your own pace yeah. and, that, and that's going to be very evident in this album mm. in September but I think we should play some uh, familiar right now familiar. Yeah. And Liam thank you for coming <laughs> to see you know you always have a home with us the Mercedes AMG interview lounge